All right, and thank you for tuning in to another video of Federal Signal Pathfinder programming. In today's video, we will be talking about groups and priorities. So what are groups? Groups are great for, specifically, I use them for sounds. So let's say, for example, you had uh, button six plays a unique sound like... Um, pull to the right, pull to the right, and then button seven does no loitering, uh, no loitering. Okay, so you have button six and button seven do two speaker things. Now, obviously, you can't play both of them at the same time because you've set channel one and two to both this and channel one and two to both that. Uh, you can get a little more creative, and if you do this, like you delete channel 1 from one of your buttons, and then you delete channel 2 from one of your buttons, and then you press them individually, you can get both of your speakers to say two different things using two different buttons. But in our example, um, we are going to be uh, doing it this way. Now, where are groups and, and uh, priorities? So we're going to go to System. We're going to go to input grouping. And now we want button six and seven to be in one group. So like it says, um, use a drag and drop to group features. Only one feature in a group will be active at the same time. So if you activate six, seven turns off. If you activate seven, six turns off. You can never have them both on at the same time. It's very helpful for a whole bunch of other things. I specifically use them for sounds. I don't have an example of what else you could use them for. I, I do know that they are very useful when it comes to other stuff. So we like it that way. Button six and button seven can only be one. Only one can be on at the same time. Now, what is priorities? Now, you might be saying, why are there only certain things in the priorities? Uh, this is a glitch with the software um, to get the other ones to show up. You actually have to just click everything. So as soon as I click everything once, everything will show up. Um, that also includes the virtuals and inputs and things like that. Um, so all these other things now should be here. Uh, what's important about priorities? Whatever is on top is going to be activated on for activated first. So generally speaking ignition needs to be first that's priority you always need to tell you the truth none of the other buttons really matter to be on at first unless you design it that way but what's very important is keeping the ignition wire the yellow wire on the pathfinder first and that's assuming that you're using the yellow wire and you're not using the obd uh, connector to activate your siren We'll go over the OBD um, connection in another video at a different point in time. For right now, we're assuming that you are using the yellow wire to activate and turn on your Pathfinder. So ignition needs to be front. And what I've learned over time is that remote PA should be second um, and local PA. You have to also click it too. Like I said, you have to click all these things to get them to show up. So we'll just click everything real quick just so we don't have to do this in the future. So it, it's easy to kind of go over um, in the future. It might look like a cluster now when I open this up, but it'll be a lot easier to work on in the future so you won't have to deal with these things. So we're gonna put ignition out of the front. We're gonna put remote PA on second and local PA on number three. Now, what are, what's the remote PA? The remote PA is if you are using um, the remote style PA that plugs into the back of the control head. What, if you, what happens if you're using the, I think it's a two and a half or a two and a quarter inch um, like guitar mic plug that goes into the back of the physical Pathfinder. Not all Pathfinders have that, by the way. Only some of them when you're using the remote head one. Um, talk to your dealer or look that up if you're confused on if yours has it or not. Um, basically, if you do have the amplifier alone, standalone unit, it's not plugged in 
I mean, the control head doesn't physically like attach to it, then you probably have um, what they ha call is the, I think it's a two and a quarter inch um, microphone jack. Plugs physically into the amplifier itself. Um, not too many people use that. I use it because I like it a lot better. Um, if you are using that, you need to put that above the remote PA. If you're using the remote PA, put that above that. And pretty much everything else is good for now. We haven't really gotten to any complex programming, so there's really nothing we really need to work on um, right now. I would put park at number four, um, and then horn relay at number five. Uh, that's just kind of the way I was taught, and that's just the way I've been doing things. And so far, nothing's gone wrong with the way I've done it, so we're gonna keep it that way. Ignition number one, remote PA number two, if you're using the remote PA, if you're using the local PA, the physical guitar mic plug one, put into number two. Number three will be whatever the other one isn't. Park number four, horn number five. And then everything else we can just leave alone for right now. So, now that we have an understanding on what grouping does and we have a partial understanding of what priorities do, we'll cover all of that in the future with more advanced programming. Right now, we just want to get everyone situated with very basic programming because this can be very overwhelming if you just hop into advanced mode right away. Going over actually the local PA and the remote PA, we need to address something that we didn't do before. So if you are using the local PA, you actually need to set the PA to where are you public address on for both of them um that's just what you have to do i don't know why it's not defaultly like that if you're using the blank configuration but that's what you need to do so as soon as you have your local pa and your remote pa set to pa honestly even if you're not using the local pa i would just set it to pa anyways and same thing for remote if it wasn't defaultly already set up that way it's easier, it's not going to hurt anything, it doesn't really matter. So, keeping both of them the way they are, and ensuring that their priorities are the way that they're supposed to. In this case, we are be, will be using the local PA, so we want to keep it number two. Remote PA will be three, park four, horn five. And our groups, button six and seven, only one can be activated. You can actually do this with all the virtuals and physical buttons, it can be very helpful when you get into advanced programming. Like I said earlier, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We'll cover it in a future video.